would do mixes and add more effects to things yeah, or yeah. add more compression or EQ or and whatever. you always had the tape delays going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The four tracks. Yeah. yeah. That would, you know, yeah. If, if that ran out in the middle of a mix, boy, were you in trouble. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that was one of the jobs of being the assistant, right? I mean, we, that's, yeah. we were sitting there all, you know, the whole time. I, I would do moves for you guys. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'd do moves on the outboard. Yeah. I'd have like written down and then I, you'd yeah. run the tape machines and whenever you'd finish a mix... Everybody want to listen back, so you'd rewind the f-ing delay tape machines. Oddly enough, I think the very first thing that I made was a delay line. It's not exactly uh, digital. A digital delay. Oh no, digital. Yeah. Absolutely digital. But it wasn't the 1745, right? No. I'm talking about prehistory here. I made a couple of things just as an experiment. This is because I liked audio stuff. And the company that I was working for, remember I was working in a defense plan with access to all sorts of integrated circuits and they had shift registers for the uh, real-time spectrum analyzers. And these shift registers had 256 bits, not kilobits, not kilobytes, not mega, not giga, not tera, just bits. bits. And I built using 256 bit shift registers an audio delay line. Uh, the, the A to D technology at the time was pretty primitive, but uh, actually it sounded really good. It was mm. a, a monotonic uh, converter. What was the thought, what was the purpose of the delay line going to be? Or, what, you, you had to have a purpose? There we go. <laughs> Where'd you come from? <laughs> there we the go. Bronx. The Bronx. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, that explains everything. So, <laughs> but wait, now you're, you're saying A to D, D to A. Explain how yeah. A to D and D to A is going well, on Well, if you're going to have a digital delay line with analog signals, you have to convert the analog to digital. You put it into the shift registers. You convert it back to analog again, and then you could hear the signal only, uh, in this case, I think uh, it turned out to be one or two milliseconds later and you could see it on an oscilloscope or you could create a sort of a fixed phasing effect and uh, as the chips got better and cheaper of course you could make them longer and longer and longer and a few years after making this little experimental prototype at home the chips became cheap enough and reliable enough or almost reliable enough to uh, to make a uh, commercial product out of it and when did you realize that it had a musical application? Pretty much right away, I would say. I think Steve. Now, now this is when oh, Steve, he had a recording studio. Steve was still with us right. with the recording studio. He would play around with this stuff, and uh, he was recording with Kendry Spring at the time. They wow, may have yeah, been one sure. of the uh, the first bands to use wow. uh, use wow. any of our stuff. It, it it became obvious that uh, that delay lines had a lot of functions in right. uh, in recording. And as time went on, the first delay we built was the 1745, and then the 1745A, which used actually pretty reliable shift registers as opposed to the 1745. They would keep uh, let's let's just say their infant mortality lasted into middle age. I mean, obviously, prior to this, people were using tape delays. So the the initial delay limit on a 1745 is. 200 milliseconds. There you go. Although you could get one a little cheaper by having it half populated and going up to 100 milliseconds. Right. That's for people who weren't record plant. But we were always pretty sanguine about doing well with these things because uh, from the very beginning, real, real studios would buy them. Yeah. Right. I remember hand delivering a 1745M to Electric Lady. Yeah. Like in a box, and I was just really? so pumped. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what, 18, 17? Wow. Electric lady needs this right now. Go right down. Bring it. It was carried on the train. <laughs> did you take cash for it? No, I did not. They dealt with that. I was you didn't? Like, no. That's he what He still happened. has it in his pocket. <laughs> yeah. So I got that 200 bucks. So what would have been? Well, speaking of, yeah. what were we selling this stuff for back then? Uh, what was it, about 4,000 bucks? No. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, antihistamine money, to be sure. Two hundred milliseconds, four thousand wow. dollars. That's great. Back when four thousand dollars was worth almost four thousand yeah. dollars. Richard came mm. to Record Plant, the very first prototype, I think, of the original digital delay line. But we didn't know it was called that. He just said it's a delay, and we were like, no <laughs> tape. And he's like, no, no. And it had almost no markings on it. It had the big rotary switches. Yeah, they were like knobs. ten milliseconds, yeah. twenty milliseconds, yeah. right? Something like that. Yeah. And and we're like, well, what do we do? He goes, well, just put stuff in it, you know. <laughs> and like, I remember it was me, Jack, and Jay, and I think it was like Aerosmith, like maybe Get Your Wings. I'm not even sure if wow. it was that early. 
and we're like, okay, and we plug, wow, it sounds good on a guitar. What? If, let's put a drum in it. And we just went crazy with it. It was brilliant. Right. It right. was so brilliant. And then about a week later, he comes back and says, I need it back. And we're like, no. And he goes, all right, we'll get, we'll get you one. This is a prototype. But we, we had no idea what the knobs were doing. Right. We just, we'd just dial something. we go, that sounds awesome. Leave that. And Jack would be like, print that on the guitar. And we did. Amazing. Steven Stills at that time had an eventide digital delay. He could not do a session without it. And this is 1980. He called it the gizmo and he loved that thing and it had to be there. My next job after that was with Prince. I was with Prince from 1983 to 1988. And uh, we had a lot of equipment and we were buying a lot more because we were building Paisley Park Studios and we were on the road. And uh, I had to have, had to have my eventide harmonizer and I had to have my delays. That was essential, and there, there were really only two pieces of equipment I had to have throughout my career. 